On this episode of Three Black Guys with the Mic, the debate, should we boycott Starbucks? Plus, we talk about James Comey and Officer Frazier Davis of the Detroit Police Department is on the show to talk about how we should engage with the police. All that and more on this episode of Three Black Guys with the Mic. First of all, let me tell you something. Lamont is just full of Sometimes my mama said, you know, you don't have nothing nice to say. You <laughs> should be quiet. Who said that Stephen A is a coon? You agree with that? Everybody got quiet on that one, okay? Uh, 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 Go ahead. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Three Black Guys with a Mic. It's all about Wendy's. Yes, it's all about Wendy's in 2018. It's always fresh, never frozen at a participating Wendy's near you. Did you know that Wendy's has a mixtape? If you have not heard it on Spotify, you need to download that thing. I'm talking about Wendy's is changing the game, not only in the music business, but in the food business. Head over to Wendy's and get yourself a Wendy's four for four. Now with eight options. The other day I pulled up to Wendy and got myself a spicy chicken wrap, baby. You can get yourself one of those or double stack a crispy chicken sandwich, a regular girl. A regular girl go wrap, Junior Bacon Cheeseburger, Crispy Chicken BLT, Junior Cheeseburger, or Junior Cheeseburger Deluxe. With all these options, plus nuggets, fries, and a drink. Can't beat that. It's always fresh, never frozen, at a participating Wendy's near you. Often not valid in Alaska and Hawaii. Let's do it! It's time to start the show. Welcome to Three Black Guys with the Mike Spot is here. Lamont is here. Maynard is here for another episode. Um, Got a lot going on today. Let's just start with, I don't know where we should start, man. Should we start with Coachella? Should we start with Starbucks? Um... Sorry, I got a little bit of a cold, so bear with me. Um, let's start with Starbucks. So, T.I., everybody's saying that we should be boycotting Starbucks. So, if you don't know, so basically, two black men were in a Starbucks. The manager asked them to they leave. Keep in, they refused to they leave. They in Spruce, Philadelphia, was where the Starbucks is located. So, it's, you know, put it. make sure you, you know. What? It what? was in Philadelphia. I mean, you just said two black said men. Phil- no, you didn't. I did in the beginning. Okay, go, then, go ahead, man. No. Keep, keep talking. Why are you paying attention to me? <laughs> <laughs> Don't anyway, pay me no damn mind. Two men, two black men were in a Starbucks in Philly, and they got asked to leave. They were waiting for somebody. The police came. They arrested them. I'm going to start with you, Maynard, because you're from Philly. Is this wrong? And should we be boycotting Starbucks? Or should we just be like, you know what? You got arrested. Y'all should have left. See you later. Yo, um, I feel like that the Philadelphia Police Department did what they were supposed to do. It's unfortunate that that had to happen. But, yo, when you you in somebody's establishment and they be like, yo, you got to go, you got to go. Now, that doesn't mean that Starbucks was right. I feel like Starbucks started this whole thing off wrong. You got you you got to think like a you know that as a manager of a Starbucks, you got to ask yourself like, do I want to call the police and have these people kicked out for basically nothing and know that I'm I'm part of a major brand like Starbucks or like T- Target or you know, Chick-fil-A or any of these major brands that this thing could go viral and you do you want that? So do I think that Starbucks or do I think that the police department handled it incorrectly? I think the police department, you know, handled it fairly decently. I wonder, you know, why did it have to get that way between Starbucks and the dudes? Lamont, you, you, you looking kind of, you looking kind of shaky. What's the deal? I mean, because, so you're saying that all of the white people that were sitting in there, they didn't have to leave. They were on the Wi-Fi. They didn't buy anything. So are you saying that the white man's ice is colder? No. <laughs> that it was that no. they didn't get arrested. I, I mean, I, what do you, you say? I'm confused, Maynard. Up front. So I, I, so, up, so, so I can't go to Starbucks and sit down and and like not buy anything and, and get the police called on me? Is that what you're saying? So what I'm suggesting is that the Starbucks person handled it incorrectly. So Starbucks didn't have to call the police. But when they called the police, the police show up. 
The Starbucks manager and or employees said it's that guy. No, oh no, no, not those two, three people over there. It's these two guys over here. So, so, so the means, white people are so the white people are okay, but we got to hold the, on. The, no, the no, darkies, no, no, the, no, the Lamont, brown ones, Lamont, we, they got to go. Lamont, what are you saying? I'm saying that I'm saying Starbucks should have handled it differently. But when the police show up, the police are going to handle what the what the the call is about. You, you what the police supposed to be like? Okay, well these two ain't buy nothing. I need to see receipts from everybody in here, and I mean we're we gonna arrest everybody. Is that what is that what you suggest in Lamont? I so mean, it's okay for the black guys to get arrested, but not the white people that were in there and they didn't buy. The anything. white people were there was no complaint against the white people by Starbucks. That's what I'm saying. Starbucks oh, handled it. So their ice is colder, right? Lamont, can you find another catchphrase? Well, it's a, like actually, you? it's it's a coffee house, so nobody's ice is cold in there. <laughs> <laughs> so hot. Okay. Okay. Everybody yeah. had everybody had hot coffee. Everybody so had are hot you coffee. saying? Are you saying? So Lamont, you and Spud come to my house. I don't like something that you said, but Spud said the exact same thing. I called the police and said I want Lamont to get out. You don't. You, and what you going to do? The police going to come. They're going to take you out. Is Spud going to stay? I'm going to do what the thousands of other people across this country have said is that the black patrons should be treated the same as the white patrons. If the white patrons don't have to pay, then why should I have to? I mean, why should I be arrested? Because I didn't buy anything. But that, the, remember, it's not the police officer's job to determine who bought something, who didn't buy. It. If, if the if the call was about somebody stealing something, then they could say, yeah, well, we bought this or we didn't buy this. But the call was about trespassing, saying we asked these people to leave and they haven't left. They're not, and we no longer want them here on the premises. That's, there's the police officers don't really. I'm, I'm just, I'm disappointed in you, Mater. I, I really, I really the thought. Jo the job of, of the police officer is not to sort out the right and the wrong. The job is the police officers to say, Mr. Homeowner or Mr. Starbucks owner or Starbucks manager or whatever the case may be, what is your complaint? Your complaint is such and such. Gentlemen, I'm going to ask you all to leave. So but you're we, saying that so so the police should not have asked about the white patrons who were there who didn't no, buy anything? they shouldn't have. They should not have. They shouldn't have asked about it. They should have came and addressed the call. They don't have, that's not their job to try to figure out, to compare 15 other people in there and say, well, did you, did this guy buy something? How much of something did he buy? He only bought one coffee, but he'd been sitting here for four hours. That's not their job. The, the complaint is these two people are trespassing. That's the complaint. They didn't say that 15 I'm, people I'm are disappointed in you, man. I'm really disappointed in, okay. in your blackness. All right. Well, then you go I'm ahead and really... march. You go ahead and march and, and don't get you no Starbucks. <laughs> go ahead with your Starbucks marching I'm, ass. I'm really disappointed in you, man. I, I, I am so surprised you took this position because it sounds like you're sanctioning discrimination of African Americans in Starbucks. You're I'm saying not, it's okay. You, you missed the whole point. The police came and did their job. They were unfortunate pawns in this game. Starbucks, the manager at Starbucks was wrong. I never, I'm, I'm not shied away from that point. The manager at Starbucks is wrong. She tried, he or she pulled the ultimate trump card. Oh, you're not going to leave? I'm going to call the cops. Well, the cops only are doing their job. It's not their job to show up and try to sort out a whole bunch of puzzle pieces. You have been asked to leave. If you have, if you do not leave, you are trespassing. Trespassing is a, is is breaking the law. We're asking you to leave now. That's it. that's. I mean, that's unfortunately that that's it. Fortunately, the police and the gentlemen who were asked to leave, all that went very smooth. No one was injured, but Starbucks manager at that location they screwed up they should so not should, have done so that so should these two guys get a check I think they should pursue whatever civil remedies they think are necessary well I'm sure that the reason why the owner of Starbucks has asked to meet with these guys is to be able to nip the situation in the bud he's basically <laughs> like yo it, it, uh, what, what y'all mean would they get yeah. a check? Uh, probably. Okay. I'm sure that they'll probably, you know, they'll get something. They're gonna probably get compensated in in one way. I mean, would they, they give them a little a little lifetime, you know, latte card? You know, come in and get a lemon loaf on us. 
Get a lemon loaf. <laughs> a little lemon loaf. Come on, man. It, man. You, you don't eat the lemon ah, loaf. What's the little, what's the little popsicle little, little thing? The little popsicle dough that thing? Little, oh, I like uh, the, yo, low key. I'm not a big Starbucks. I don't drink coffee, but that Rice Krispie treat and the lemon loaf are dope. I come on. Little, little, the lemon loaf is dope. I like the lemon earth. loaf. You know what? You know who the reason why they got the lemon loaf? This is what I heard. Is that uh, Magic this is Johnson? Such a sidebar, by the way. Yeah, no, no, no. They said Magic Johnson said black people like lemon cake. So they said when oh, Magic Jesus. got into the fold. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> they like a little so, icing. But the bigger question is, is you know, Lamont, should we be boycotting? Yes. T.I. said no more Starbucks. Yes. Should we, we should be, be done with Starbucks? Yeah, we should be all of with, them. Yeah, with our picket signs, we need to call. Where's Jesse Jackson at when we need him? We need. Hey, we, hey, we, hey, hey, Jesse what? Jackson, Jesse Jackson, let Jesse Jackson do his thing. Why? We, this is man, what, we this ain't what Jesse boycotting does. no damn Starbucks, man. Why not? Why? Look, this they did they fire the chick? They fired yes. them, right? That person got fired. But we yeah. have to make them feel the pain of our Listen, economic. Listen, Lamont, power. Lamont, Lamont, Lamont. We can't be out here, boy. We, we're going to boycott everything at some point. Monique got us out here boycotting Netflix. <laughs> we, can't watch, we can't have no Starbucks. Then uh, before we you gotta, know it, we're we going to have five places to go. There's going to be two <laughs> fried none chicken be joints. Black <laughs> right. None of them going to be right. black on. There's going to be two fried chicken joints and, a, and, a, and an organic soap manufacturer. That's all we're going to so, be able to go to. So, we can't so be out saying, here boycotting oh, everything. Saying, oh, you saying all we do is consume chicken? I'm just saying, if we keep boycotting everything else, we trying to consume some Starbucks, but apparently you ain't letting us do that. You want us yeah. to boycott them. We can't even have no daggone Netflix, even though I'm using my sister's Netflix. Um, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Scratch that, scratch that, scratch that. <laughs> you got Listen, the I don't think, you know, I don't think we need to boycott all the Starbucks, but maybe, let listen, the protest was good. Let the protest be. The lady got, or the manager got fired. The owner, I mean, the uh, CEO issued an apology. Call, let let these two boys get it in a check. Call the day. Call Keep it a day. Moving. Let's move on. Next topic. Shoot. Next topic. I ain't talking about Lamont. You talking about Lamont? I ain't or are you talking, talking to, to Lamont? <laughs> I am so disappointed, Maynard. I, I, I just thought you were on Team Black. Bye, Negro. <laughs> <laughs> Coachella, Lamont. Now let me tell you something. Anybody that is not putting their application to be in the Beehive by midnight tonight, submissions are closed. We have been overwhelmed with application. Wait, did you get a job that we didn't know about that? You got, yo, yo, dog, what is listen, up with man. your man? Just, what's up with yo, your man? Yo, I, dog. Just, I didn't know if he got a if Listen. we were supposed to be on the same thing, I didn't get my applications in the mail. Listen. I didn't know if we were supposed to tell people about Listen. the applications or not. Listen, we shut it down by midnight. You see what I'm saying? What are, what so are, who, who, first of all, who is we? Who is we? <laughs> That's what I was asking. Like, I didn't get nothing in the mail. I am part of the Grand Council of the Beehive. You oh, know what I'm saying? The Grand Council. Wow. The, Grand, the, Grand the, Grand, Council. the Grand Council. Yo. But, but real, but yo real you, be listen, careful, listen. be careful though, Lamont, because you know, yo, because the internet is a savage. You don't want nobody photoshopping no damn hornets, <laughs> <laughs> no, no black and yellow hornets outfit on you. No, no, no. no, no. We don't need that. No, no, but but real spill though, man. It, 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 honestly, this is the only time I could have not had Jay Z on the stage been okay. Because what that young lady or what that lady, that woman, I don't know. What can we say now, Maynard? I can't say woman. female, right? Woman. What that woman did on that stage was almost iconic, bro. You know what I'm saying? From the, oh, my God. Come on. You can't. So wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. So remember when Michael was up there, Jerry Curl, the whole everything? I mean, she was on that status that night, bro. She, What she did was. She showed her level of commitment to the black community. She so, showed her level of, of of being the queen, you know what I'm saying, on that level from an artistry, music standpoint. She hit it on all cylinders, bro, and that was flawless. You know what I'm saying? Logistically, what she did, it was amazing. At some, band, point, at some, the, point, the, at some point out loud, the word, you know, somebody read the description of a feminist. And were, right before that, it was saying something about, you know, a strong woman doesn't have to such and such for the um, you know, acquiesce to a, a male or 
for the attention of men and I'm a feminist and, 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 and gave the definition of that all oh, while she's wearing a leotard with her ass hanging out. I'm sorry, ooh, my dude. Ooh, 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 I, mean, ooh, I mean, I'm calling the spade a spade, my dude. Yo, and Lamont, go like this. Go like this. You got a little, you got a little Beyonce on you. <laughs> she's, she's a married brown woman. I'm a married a little, man. You hear I mean, me? you just brown nose and just a little bit, my I'm dude. I'm just saying, but here's what I'm gonna say, and I and I hear you, and I get that, but I just feel like. You know, you always was, it was it was amazing, bro. You you, you got to give her that, man. You, you have to give it to her, man. You always criticize, and now you actually are giving her ups. Be oh, Cardi B, like yo, she always naked. She ain't got her clothes. Yo, Beyonce been in the game a long time. She shouldn't oh, have oh, to do this. Why don't she oh, just come oh, with her? Question, come question, strong on the quiet, on the, on the quiet, on. on the quiet. She almost was really. She had a lot of clothes on, bro. At Coachella. In comparison to what she had the, in the past. Like the, 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 the cutoff shorts where they, they focused on her behind for like a whole shot. I mean, that that's having her. And then the, the leotard. I mean, what's the deal with that? So here's the deal. So if she was fully clothed, if she had like on a, a full nun's outfit, you would have been okay with the performance? I'm saying dress it up. Do something else. Why so here's my I, question. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I mean, the girl came out. The, the intro fully by clothed. itself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the intro by itself was, it was I mean, amazing. it was amazing. I, I don't even see how you, I mean, the, the outfits in the beginning with the whole Cleopatra. It was crazy. Got, I mean, that trumps the, doesn't that trump the, the short shorts? Yeah. Go, go like this right here, man. Go like this. Man, <laughs> Swipe it off, my dude. On oh, the real? Wipe it off. I got a little, I got a little Beyonce on me. Yeah, me. I got a little, a little Beyonce, Beyonce on you. I don't got a lot of it. I got. That's just got B on me. I got a little B on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lamont's all the way in the nose. Time, Lamont's all the way in the nose. Then no, no, watch this. I'm gonna some, I'm gonna go ahead and put your uh, your email address out on Twitter. So I need you to kind of chill with all that. You know what I'm saying? You get them people on you. My dude, sir, at threeblackguysatthemic.com. <laughs> I ain't afraid of no damn body. That be that be how strong, man. I'm just be telling out. You. How about that? Beyonce no. out on that. I don't. No, no but but real spill. But a real spill <laughs> from the, the the band, the the whole the, the whole black old. college thing she was doing, the thing with her sister, the thing with her husband, the thing with you know I was just four old group. bandmates. I'm, Come I'm, on, just happy Come that, on, I'm just happy that somebody gave Michelle an opportunity to perform again. That's that's really nice. On the hey, quiet, Michelle out here doing her thing. Yeah, yeah. You need to chill with that too, bro. I don't. What? Why are that's you? why you have. That's why you have gray hair because God is not blessing you <laughs> with a full head of, of, of dark hair because you're being mad disrespectful. I'm bro. very oh, curious to know what your hair would have... look like if your hair grew in. If you exactly. had hair. <laughs> No, Lamont, if your if hair you grew in, no, 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 Beyonce wants my hair to be just like this, so I'm good. You know what I'm saying? We okay. Life is great. Beyonce wants you to, Beyonce wants you to, no, Beyonce my, oh, oh, I forgot I do have a wife. Yeah, no, Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce, Beyonce wants you to do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my uh, all right, what about Cardi B? Cardi B out here, seven months pregnant, still knocking down the stage. Good a look or bad look? Oh. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, excuse me. I'm sorry. Whoa, whoa! That's how you do Cardi B. What? What? Is that how you do a Cardi B? No, honestly, I thought SNL was amazing. Um, I just felt like that energy was different. I don't know if Cardi was ready for a Coachella stage. Um, kind of a big thing. It's almost like you know you going and doing a show at the State Theater, and then you go into to the arena. I, I don't know if she was ready for that. You know what I'm saying? I felt like the SNL thing was a little bit more of a, even though it was a national, international audience, it was more confined, so to speak. I just was like, I went to sleep. You know what I'm saying? What you want me to do? I had to wait up late and I saw what I saw and I laid down. Other than Beyonce, who did you like? Did you like Eminem? Did you like Migos? On the quiet, I'm going to tell you who I thought did pretty good was Dave's Loaf. Her, her set, it was okay. I was surprised. I, I, didn't, I didn't have any expectations. I mean, Migos, no disrespect, but I want to hit him in a club. I don't want no parts of their their performance. I'm good on that. I'll pass. And I, I, I mean, I saw the whole thing going on on social media. So what is the deal with between Nicki Minaj and Cardi B? I missed that whole. Where's the beef at in this situation? Ain't it? I, you know, this is how I read it. You know, so Cardi finally had dropped her album. And I know this is 
taking it a, a couple weeks back because the, so the album came out April six, right? Mm-hmm. And Nikki really didn't have an announcement date on anything, and neither did Drake. But all of a sudden, they dropping three and four songs the same at the same time that that um, Cardi coming out. It's apparent that Nikki is trying to make sure that she doesn't, you know, lose any spotlight. Now is. It's one thing to not lose any spotlight, but it's another thing to step on somebody else's. And I think what Cardi is feeling like is like, yo, you know, let me shine. You you didn't have your your moment. Let me have my moment. But I don't. I, don't, I feel like Nikki is like, yo, I'm you know, I'm not letting it up. But she don't want none. Of, she don't want none of that Remy though. Remy Ma. She don't want none of that Remy. Yo, she, I don't care what you say. That uh, that Chin Lee and that Barbie things. Those is hot records. You know, I it's gotta a, go whoa, back to Lamont. Whoa, 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 whoa. I gotta go back to Lamont. So, so you trying to say Cardi that B, got some... Cardi B, Cardi B, I mean not Cardi B. Uh, Nicki Minaj lost the battle, but she definitely won the war. No oh, question whoa. about it. I don't know. And Chin Lee is hot. I'm saying, I think that I think she may have, she may have won the war against Remy, but you know the Cardi B album is the Cardi B album is fire. No, 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 no. It's, it's nice, but here's the deal: the race is not finished. And I think, oh no 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 no! Cardi B train is moving way too fast for Nicki, Nicki Minaj. You can't catch right back now. up right now. No, I I, I, listen, listen. I hear what you're saying for right now, but in 12 months from now, I don't know if I'm still on that Cardi oh, B train. Oh, you I'm said that saying. 12 months ago. But the, the thing is, though, Lamont is this this one piece, my dude. What? She it took her basically. What's it taking, um, Nicki like? That's like that's like twenty four months between hotnesses. She had to she had to run around the world really quick to go get those bags, bro. <laughs> she had to run to Dubai. She had to go to South Africa. Yo, how, many of those checks, two, how many of those checks did you get? I mean, what? Two and a half years in between hotnesses like that because that low key the no frauds joint last summer. Yeah, eh. yeah. I just hated. Bro. It was okay. it was lukewarm. It was I mean it was you know it was. It was a better club record than the Sheetha joint, okay. but when you go back, like, you know, and, you know, was it a Bodak Yellow? If you ask right now, if you ask the average person right now, have you heard No Frogs? The average person would be like, Who's "No, I that? never heard that from Nick or not." No, no, Nick Minaj like, did that no, song. Yeah, no, but, hold on, but, but, no, hold on, you, no. You, you said No Frogs. Wasn't that yeah, TLC right. song from back in the day? <laughs> Stop. Oh, that's No <laughs> Scrubs. Yeah, but see, here's, how, here's a, but here's the problem. The average person is just what it is. They're average. Oh, Jesus. They're, they're going to no, The average it. person buys the record. The average nope. person is first the all, consumer. First of all, they're buying it streaming. How about that? They're going to pay their $6.99 okay. a month, right? They're going to type it in. What Lamont, is that? Lamont, Lamont, is, a month. Lamont is I'm, a, just, is, I'm just throwing it out there. What? Oh, why are I, you so I was trying to figure out what platform is $6.99 <laughs> a month. That's what I want to know. I'm just going to go with six. Six felt better at the time. Okay. All right. All right. So... They're they're average. They're going to do what the label tells them to do. You know what I'm saying? That's how that works. So wait, 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 wait. Who? The average person. The label is going to tell the average no, person no, no. to buy the record. No, 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 no. You just said that the average person is going to say this. The average person is going to do what they're told. As a program director, a program director's job is to tell the average person what's hot. Yeah. Agree. Yeah, I guess. Ah. All right, let's, go to a break. let's go to a break. When we come back, we'll talk about James Comey in his uh, interview last night or his interview on CBS. Was it on CBS? ABC. 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 Thank you. We'll come back and we'll talk about James Comey interview on ABC right here. It's Three Black Guys with the Mic. Man, do I love card night. You ready, boys? You got a king? Go, fish that. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Titus O'Neil. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Hey, family, we need your help. We try to grow this podcast to go worldwide, but we can't do it without you. So what we need you to do is, is in your iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever you listen to this podcast, we need you to rate it and review it. 
So if you're in iTunes, we need you to hit that subscribe button. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Subscribe. We do episodes every single Tuesday. You'll get a brand new episode every single Tuesday. Plus, rate the show. Let us know how we're doing. If you like it, if you hate it, if you agree with us, if you don't agree with us, it's all good. Just leave us a review. So that way we know how we can be able to get better and how we can be able to take this show worldwide. So we need your help. Go to wherever you listen to this podcast and subscribe, rate it, and review it. We appreciate it. We thank you so very much. Now, back to the show. Let's get back to it. Welcome back to Three Black Guys with the mic. Uh, let's get it to James Comey. James Comey was on ABC, did his interview. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Maynard. What's your thoughts? What do you think about James Comey in his interview? Um, I feel like JC is out here trying to sell some books, first off. And I ain't mad at him because that's what that's what you know Trump fired him, so he needed some kind of job. So sell them books. Um, he's a little bit, you know, what I'm saying um, he got some salesmanship with him. He got he got some game, um, but the real deal is he's speaking truth. It just has a little extra flash on it that it, it probably don't need, but that's his style of selling books. You can't be mad at him. Do you think that he was a little out of line, a little, you know, he did some mudslinging about Trump's hair, about his hands, about, you know, his eyes and, you know, all that other stuff. Is that really important? I mean, I understand, you know, you got to get some juicy stuff, like you just said, in regards to selling books. But was that part necessary? Like, to me, that part was ne- that makes me not want to buy the book. Well, I would say this, that, you know, as a. As a writer, he probably was looking at it, you know, from a literary standpoint to say, let me set the scene. You know, I I hadn't met this man. I don't know this man. And, you know, I walk into a room and here he is for the first time face to face, you know, or we're, we're, you know, we're we're together. And I was taken aback by the fact that he had this um, this orange skin with the with the white rings around his eyes, which shows that he's tanning. And then this his hair just seemed to be. You know, and he was just, I think what he was trying to do is show you how he was taking it all in and paint this picture about what he was seeing. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Was that a, v, is that a V12 engine? What was that? A V8, V6? <laughs> what are we doing? I mean, I, I, I love it. I like seeing two, uh, we can't call them middle aged, what we call them, older white men just basically bickering and fighting. I mean, I get enjoyment out of it. I think it's wonderful. It's great. I like seeing somebody that can get under Donald Trump's skin to where he has to run to Twitter to kind of go back at Mr. Comey and Comey on, you know, AB. He's on the tour right now. He's on I the promo. Almost, You're on promo, he's baby. On, listen, I heard he's coming to Chicago. He's coming to Detroit. He's like, yo, I'm slinging these books, and I'm going to talk trash about Donald Trump. So I'm like, let's just sit back and watch the show, man. I, I, I like it because it's all about clicks and views. Two it's white men. <laughs> That's all this is. It's clicks and views. You gotta get his Amazons up, man. You gotta get them yeah. Amazons up, baby. So I'm going to let them fight. You know, we we we're so busy trying to pick up and 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 take on every fight. Let them fight each other. You know what I'm saying? Let them go at it and just bicker and complain and bitch and moan at each other. So I'm I'm enjoying it. Hmm. You gonna buy the book? Yeah, I already got the book. What are you talking about? Damn, you got the, the book pre- already? How'd you get the book? I hit, I hit, no, no, I, I, I hit the button. The book ain't out yet. I hit the. Where there's on, a will, you there's on the pre order you on the pre order joint. Yeah. Oh. I, and I and you know, I I don't want to say it like this will sound bad, but it's not many books I want to rush to go read, but his cause he knows where the bodies are buried. You know what I'm saying? On a lot of other different levels. He's FBI. So of course you had to get that one. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh Maynard, this uh whole Michael Cohen uh, representing Sean Hannity thing, is this even a thing or well, I think I think it's a thing in a couple of ways. One way is this, you know, people were concerned about um, you know, Michael Cohen, right? He's somebody's lawyer. He, you know, what we what we're learning really is that Michael Cohen had three clients. All of one of one is Trump and the other two are tied to Trump. So, mm-hmm. I think we start to see that his um his law practice, he he works for the Trump organization. At least that his business card says, you know, his email address said Michael Cohen at Trump organization dot com or whatever. He's in the Trump Tower building and so on and so forth. You know, it gets to a point where you can't separate the attorney from the client. They're, they're, they become one in the same. So when when you're attorney 
you know, there was like some, it might've been The Wire or some other movie a long time ago when the attorney takes part in the crime, there's no, the privilege goes away. And it's, mm-hmm. it appears that, you know, Michael Cohen is, you know, wildly part of the crime. And if you listen to Trump, he's always saying the things that the boy Sean Hannity is saying. Sean Hannity is actually giving Donald Trump his talking points. So, you know, I wonder, are they sliding talking points through Michael Cohen? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So then this last part is, you know, when they ran up in, they ran up in this spot, they ran up on Michael Cohen's joint, you know, they were to refer that to the Southern District of New York. That's not federal. That's going to be some state. And if that happens, Trump can't um, pardon them. You know what I'm saying? So he might have to hold some weight right there. That's not like, is that, you said that's chess and not checkers? Yeah. It's not even chess any longer. It's check and mate. My dear. <laughs> <laughs> check and mate. This game, this at least this series of games, this series is over. And mm. so, man. I, I, so, he, so, so he's going to jail? I think Michael, I, there's, I, there's nothing that he can do to deal. Like, think about this. If I'm Mueller and I send the people up in your spot and they take your computer, six, seven phones, they go to your, your, your other crib, your other office, they go to your gym locker at down at the New York downtown athletic club, take your stuff out of there. And then like, what you going to tell me that I don't already got? I already got all your stuff. Oh, let me give you some more. No, we already got that. That's on the hard drive. We've seen it. So we got all of it. And you, but I'm going to give you something on Trump. We got it. It's already here, dude. You, there's no rolling over. So is is he going to jail? Probably. Okay, cool. I'll take it. Michael Cohen, you think Michael Cohen's going to jail? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. You think anybody's going to follow after that? Oh, certainly. You think he's You think he's going to take down... Is, is, is he taking people down with him? No, he can't. He can't. I mean, he, he there's nothing for him to give up. They st- they they came in and got his hard drive, his phones. They they went to his baby mama house. They, everywhere he ever rushes here, they went and got his stuff. So mm-hmm. what you gonna do? Are you gonna you gonna roll over and what? We already got all your stuff, dude. We already know the answers to the questions. Right. So right. you know, but I'm gonna give you Trump. You already gave us Trump when we ran up in your spot and took your stuff. <laughs> we got Trump right then. You know what I'm saying? So nah, he ain't got he ain't got no he ain't got no cards to play. Let's go to a break. Uh, we come back. We're gonna talk to Officer Frazier Davis from the Detroit Police Department about how we should engage with the police. We'll be right back in Street Black Eyes with the mic. Man, do I love card night? You ready, boys? You got a king? Go fish that! Oh, come on! <laughs> this is WWE superstar Titus O'Neil. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Hey, family, we need your help. We try to grow this podcast to go worldwide, but we can't do it without you. So what we need you to do is, is in your iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever you listen to this podcast, we need you to rate it and review it. So if you're in iTunes, we need you to hit that subscribe button. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Subscribe. We do episodes every single Tuesday. You'll get a brand new episode every single Tuesday. Plus, rate the show. Let us know how we're doing. If you like it, if you hate it, if you agree with us, if you don't agree with us, it's all good. Just leave us a review. So that way we know how we can be able to get better and how we can be able to take this show worldwide. So we need your help. Go to wherever you listen to this podcast and subscribe. Rate it and review it. We appreciate it. We thank you so very much. Now, back to the show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Three Black Guys with the Mike. Uh, retired officer from the Detroit Police Department. Officer Frazier is with us to talk about the ins and the outs of what really goes on with the uh, police. Because there are so many things that go on. Uh, with police brutality and the way that we perceive the police when we see them on the news. So we decided that we were going to get an actual police officer who has been through it to be able to tell us what really happens and how really things go on when it comes to the police. So, Officer Frazier, one, 
Welcome to Three Black Guys with the Mic. Two, tell everybody a little bit about your history with the Detroit Police Department. <clears throat> Thank you for having me. Um, I spent um, 19 and a half years, uh, well, actually 20 years as a Detroit police officer. Um, within the course of uh, my career, I uh, started in patrol, uh, worked uh, various units, uh, carjacking, uh, task force, um, gang squad, vice, and narcotics. Nice. And what made you decide to retire? Did somebody shoot at you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what made you decide to retire? No, actually, I uh, retired due to an injury. Um, okay. I was injured in 07. Uh, while working. So I, I, I got to, you know, I guess I'll start with. What is the relation or how do we better the relationship between the community and law enforcement? <clears throat> you know, I'm a, I'll be honest with you, being an African-American man and, and in law enforcement, um, I think there's some things that we just really have got to be honest about in our community. Mm. Um, starting starting with um, at a very early age, children are kind of taught to be afraid of the police. Right. Um, and it's and it's done in a very subconscious and a subliminal manner. Um, oftentimes, uh, you know, let's just be honest. When we see police, it's usually somebody's going to jail. It's never for anything good. It's rare. Rare it's for anything good. Um, I remember being on patrol in uniform and walking into establishments and watching parents with unruly kids go, there, go to police. I'm going to let them take you. Mm. Well, subconsciously, you're already teaching that child to be afraid of the police. Right. Um, so one of the things that I think that we need to do, um, I think that there needs to be a transparency um, with the police department and community. And I think that the community has got to be receptive to law enforcement. Can you define what the policy is when it comes to police officers and either shooting somebody, harming somebody, and it seems as if they automatically are either suspended with pay or whatever? Why are they not fired? The first part of the question, um, as it relates to police shootings, I think one of the things that the public believes is that first police officers are trained to shoot to kill. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that the way that statement has been made, it, it, it is off-putting. It's very off-putting. The fact of the matter is there is a specific way that you're trained to fire your weapon. And usually that is to fire and to hit center mass. It's not shoot to kill. It's just mm -hmm. that the way the human body is made – center mass that's where all your vital organs are and that is where you're trained um as it relates to after a shooting has happened administratively there are ver various investigations that have to be done it's not you know there are circumstances as it relates to a shooting there are things that have to be um investigated before you can just outwardly say okay you're fired or um you're suspended with or without pay and so, again, to the public, the administrative leave thing is, is, is general. That's off-putting to the public. But there is there's a due process that even the officer has to have in spite of the fact that he's been involved in an officer-related shooting. So let, let me ask this question. And um, I think this is what uh, um, I think uh, a lot of black people uh, and, and other um, – other minorities carry with them. And you're right. We, you know, you know, I have a nine year old sometimes when she's misbehaving and we see a couple like, you're going to take you away. And that certainly does create a scenario in her mind where she starts to believe, well, that's what the cops are there to do. So I understand that. But I think we also have to recognize that the officer or that the, that the police forces, you know, I guess it was a uh, last Sunday, uh, not yesterday, but the previous Sunday, 60 Minutes did this story about the lynchings and Oprah Winfrey showed the pictures. And in many of those pictures, the officers of the community were in the pictures and they they were 
you know, complicit. And that history goes through not just the, you know, 1910, 1920, but also in 1960 and in the Bull Connor days. And also in the days of the Virginia Beach uh, Greek Fest weekend when the police and the firefighters turned the hose on African Americans. So these things aren't um, just imagined. Uh, by blacks, these things are, these things, these are, these are truths and realities. And then we turn around and we look just several, you know, even several years since Virginia beach, that's 1988, 89. And we realize that, you know, w we've had this rash of shootings of unarmed black men. Um, circumstances can be challenging, um, where the, the officers had to make, you know, split decisions in, in many instances, but in some instances, it seems as if we could have we could have found a better way. And these things seem to happen to African Americans. They don't seem to happen in any similar um, uh, proportionality with people of other races. And and to answer to that, um, just uh, within probably the last four or five days or so, we had a shooting in Royal Oak. In which the victim, a police uh, involved shooting, in which the victim was not African American. Mm -hmm. And I do understand your point. Um, having worked in a department in a predominantly African American city, um, those statistics aren't, you know, all quite the same. I can merely speak about my experiences and 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 my training. Um, I don't really I don't really ever second guess um, what a police officer sees because there again as you stated you have a split second to make a life altering decision and and that's one of those things that like while we all are sports fans we can sit and watch a football game and we can say exactly where the quarterback should have thrown the ball or who he should have handed it off to but that's us sitting in our easy chair making that decision that's not us being actually on the field taking a snap. And unfortunately, law enforcement is the same way. It's just unfortunate that these re it results in, in lives being taken. Yeah, and and that's why it's not the same way. I mean, you know, not to necessarily be contradictory. I mean, an interception is an interception, but murder is murder, right? I mean, that's a whole different, that's a whole different scale. And let's, I mean, I, and I want to, I want to <laughs> kind of ask this question to help me better understand. You know, I looked at, for instance, the, the, the scenario in Sacramento where the young man, um, it was a Stephen Clark was murdered uh, by the police. And I say murder and, you know, maybe that's a loaded term, but you know, he's no longer with us either way you slice it. And the police come with a certain number of tools. Right. You, you as an officer, you had training, right? Uh, you had training Correct. in de-escalation. You had training in Correct. probably some hand to hand combat. Right. At least, you know, you learn how to wrestle or judo or something. Right. Um, you probably they teach judo in police department. What was your question? I mean, they teach. I just was curious if they teach. If they taught judo in, in, in police department. There, there are uh, wrist locks and things. That, but but oh, let me okay. just be brutally honest with you. <laughs> in all fairness and all, and in all honesty, um, none when of that matters when fan, you get in the field. Exactly. When it hits the fan, when it hits the fan, it goes <clears> right <throat> back to what you learned in eighth grade, what you used against the bully. That's exactly what you use. Okay, but you know, um, so some, they, some of that. So in that in that case in that scenario, there were all these tools. However, right, you got to. Walkie-talkie is a tool, or the, or the radio, that's a tool. The dog, that's a tool. Uh, your partner police officer, and in that particular scenario, the helicopter was a tool. You know, it, I feel like with all those tools, if the helicopter was on them, like, yo, why did they have to resort to what they would have done in eighth grade, which is the, the easiest, you know, fastest, most expeditious way of dispatching with it. You, get, you got a helicopter on the scene. And again, <clears throat> I can never speak to, and I'm not one of those, I'm not a retired officer who will say that law enforcement always make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. I, cannot, I cannot sit here and tell you what those officers in Sacramento saw or didn't see. Right. What I can tell you 
is that in a split second, a decision was made based upon whatever it is they thought they saw. And here's the thing that I do know. Based upon understanding how officer-involved shootings go, you take your chance. If, if, let's just say for the sake of this conversation, the officer had in his mind said, I'm going to go to work to kill somebody today. That's one heck of a game of poker to play with your own life. Because, again, these cases have to go before a prosecutor, and it has to be determined that you, that that officer, he or she, was actually working and doing in the performance of their duty the right thing. But how? And but how often? That's, that's how often? That's, but, a, that's a gamble. To say, that's but, a gamble to just say, "Oh, I'm going to go home I'm, today." I feel like I want to go to work and just you know fire my gun indiscriminately. But it's, it would seem and, though that the, uh, that that gamble always you know ninety nine ninety eight percent of the time winds up on the officer's side. I mean, we don't we we don't even get. You know, most most officers don't actually even get indicted. And what I would say to that is that there are instances um, and understand that the media's job is to – and that's kind of why in law enforcement I really never cared for the media because the media's job is to report exactly, you know, sensationalize certain things. They don't talk about – the countless other um, credible yet unfortunate shootings. Hey, you know what, Fraser? Not to, not to cut you off, but um, I have to agree with that too. There was an instance in, I think it was in Maryland. There was a police officer who went up to a young black male, and I think he put he he took his service weapon out and put it to his head or something, and somebody caught it on camera. And he ended up getting fired and went to jail. He did like five years. And like you said, the only way I found out about it, I was just scrolling through somebody's news feed, you know what I mean, on Facebook. So not to say and, 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 I, and what I don't want to do is put all of this on the shoulders of Officer Frazier because he is. And I want to ask this question. I'm pretty sure PDs across the country have different set of rules and regulations. Am I correct? That's correct. OK, so what may go down in Detroit Police Department, what they do in Sacramento may be apples and oranges. So here's my question. If you were to turn the clock back and you got a call that you had two African-American males in a Starbucks that refused to leave and you get to the <laughs> scene. Right. Because me, myself, mm -hmm. I think it's exactly what you said is and people are going to say what they're going to say about me. My first question when I saw the 46 second video is what happened before the 46 seconds? You know, what happened when this young man first walked into the, you know, restaurant or the establishment, the coffee place? Yep, we do know that Starbucks is a place where people come in. Yep, that they don't buy anything. Yep, that they use the restroom. Yep. But I also know, and again, I don't know if this is law or not, is that, you know, restrooms for certain establishments, whether it's Starbucks or, um, McDonald's or whatever it may be. And somebody brought this to my attention. Like if you go in, in, into New York City and you go to McDonald's that has thousands of customers a day, if you don't buy some French fries, you can't use the bathroom. They refuse. They have the right to refuse if you're not a paying customer. So mm -hmm. how would you have handled that situation if you got the call to the Starbucks, the manager said, listen, mm -hmm. we asked these young people to leave, okay? They didn't buy anything. Our restrooms are for our paying customers, and they didn't pay. We would like for them to leave. Was Starbucks right? Because the chief of police of that police department said that his officers were correct. His off I think his officers were correct. Mm -hmm. So, so why, so why, step, why so, gonna, so, 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 I'm sorry, not to cut you off. I'm sorry. So why, if if they were correct, why are we hitting? You know, why do we call Al Sharpton and Joanne Reed and Jesse Jackson and it's time to boycott Starbucks? You know, the hell with Starbucks. I'm confused if that was their establishment's right to say they are not paying customers. We would like for them to leave, and they said no, they were not going to leave. They even told the police that they wasn't going to leave. And I'm gonna. I'm going to step out there and say again that um, Detroit Police Department is the best in the nation, and, <laughs> things <in> Detroit, <laughs> and, and things in Detroit probably would be handled um, a thousand Ooh. times differently. Ooh. Upon Ooh. upon upon my responding to a 
a radio run to Starbucks, I would have made contact with the person in charge to ascertain the reason for the call, at which point in time they would have directed me to the young men seated in the dining area. I would have then approached those gentlemen and, expl- and asked them exactly, you know, introduce myself and, and, ask, and explain to them exactly why I was there and explain to them that the establishment, unless they were purchasing or buying customers, wanted them and needs them to leave. At that time, you're allowed to say whether you're going to leave or not leave. Wait, 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 time. but the white man over there, he didn't buy nothing, and that white woman over there, she, she, she's using the Wi-Fi, See, here's and the she thing. can use the bathroom. The what, what you mean, Officer Frazier? What about them white people and over the there? Thing. And here's the Joanne thing. Joanne Reed here's said that, that we should be doing like what the white man can do. And, you're, and here's Did the Joanne thing. Reed said that? No, but it sounds good. Long- <laughs> yo, man, don't yo, don't be slandering Joy like that, man. Yo, Joy, Joy, we sorry, Joy. We sorry, Joy. As, as, as that responding officer, I am yes, there at that moment in time to deal with what my radio run gave me. And my radio run gave me people refusing to leave. So upon my entering that lo- that establishment, I talked to the person in charge who placed the call, and he directed me to exactly who he wanted to leave. There's a fine line. There's a, there's, a, there's a nice line between what is civil and what is criminal. Okay? Now, if you're being discriminated against due to your race, you're going to need to have to take that up with corporate, get you a lawyer, and take that up with corporate. But as for at this moment in time, as me. a law enforcement officer, I am here to enforce the law. Officer Frazier, Officer <laughs> Frazier, Officer Frazier. Now, listen, now, we won't have to mess around, put you on. Uh, uh, you you got to go under oath at this point. This is a time in every interview <laughs> that we have to ask some really hard damn questions now. And now, listen, I, I, it's just one damn question. Damn it, Lamar, I'm setting it up. Can I set it up? You, you said questions. Come on, man. All you right, know, we, first, yeah, of all, right. first of all, you, you tried to grill my man. You tried to put him on trial for every police department. You damn right. And we're going to get to the bottom of it. Hold on, Lamar. Hold on, Lamar. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. We're going to get to the bottom of it. We're going to get to the bottom of it. What is the what is the police department's top five records of all time? Is what I want to know. <laughs> like what? What, your, what is what the top, top, top records top y'all ride out to? Of all time. Yo, <laughs> all the cops when they roll up the windows and they ride down the street. There's some black cops. Is it Young Buck Shorty want to ride with me? Is this Young Buck Shorty want to ride with me on that? What do y'all put in the police car when y'all ride out? What's your top five? <laughs> My, my, I can only speak for me. Mine used to be uh, talking outlaws, change my ways. <laughs> yeah, that that definitely is going to the east side. <laughs> That's the east side song. <laughs> oh, Got to call on the east side, put that pop on. All right, pop. What else you got? Uh, what else I got? Oh uh, man, let's see. Anything, young buck. Anything that. So they want to uh, ride with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that did it for a while. That did that, oh. that got that got a lot of airplay. <coughs> um, I don't know if I got five for y'all, man. Well, all right, give me. Those are the main two, huh? Those are the main two. Yeah, that was that was my main two. It was my those was my main go to. Give me give me three MCs then. Just three MCs that you like when you in your when you in your car, not necessarily your squad car. You at home, you at the barbecue when they come on. Oh, that's my joint. I want to hear what I, tell me what that might look sound like. Not necessarily the uh, the song, but definitely the artist. Oh, uh, dude, I'm 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 you know, I'm 47 years old, so I'm gonna give you Rock Kim, Cube, and Pop. Cube, thank you for that cube. Dope. Appreciate that. Cube. Respectable, yeah. respectable, uh-huh. respectable. Stop. Thank Stop. you for that. Cube. Stop. Respect. Uh, <laughs> Officer Frazier, thank you, man. We appreciate this conversation. This was good. We needed this conversation to get a better uh, idea of, you know, how the police work, how they think, and uh, how we need to engage with the police, man. We truly appreciate that. Officer Frazier, minding you, your man. minding this business. All right, yeah, man. Enjoy, enjoy, you, man. enjoy the retired life. Enjoy the retired life. Be good, brother. I will, man. You guys, y'all take care. Man. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the cactus of the week. This is where somebody says some stupid ish and they got to choke on their words. Maynard, who got that cactus this week? Well, Lamont, I want to ask you a question. 
I mean, you, you're looking really good. To, you're really good today, my dude. You know saying, what I'm saying? No man. homo. You know what I'm saying? Is, is that a new camera you got over there, Playboy? No, 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 man. I'm just saying, man. My stylist came to see me real quick. Oh, you know okay. I, I got you. Okay. Handled I, I want to interrupt the cactus, nah, bro. I just want to throw that in there. No, nah, but let you me ask you a question, Lamont. And I what really you want you to think hard about this. Would you have? Would you know in 2016 what the going rate is for a coon? A what? A, a raccoon? A coon. <laughs> coon. What the going rate is for a coon? Let me tell you. Well, let's go back to who the coons were in 2016. Yeah, what are you, what are you talking about? I'll get there. So let, let's discuss it. We got to play that game before we leave. Who's a coon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And how much are they worth? Who's the coon and how much are they worth? Well, yeah. apparently in 2016, the going rate for one coon was about 600 and some dollars. It turns out that uh, internet coon, I mean, internet uh, personalities, if you will, Diamond and Silk, were given 1200 and some dollars by Donald Trump's um, organization or the, uh, the campaign in 2016. To go on and be coons. I say this because that's what they are. But I'm not as disappointed that they happen to be Republicans or conservatives. That's cool. We've had Michael Steele on. We've had Carlos Dillard on. And we've shown them, uh, given them a fair hearing. And we don't have a problem necessarily with people who are Republican. We may differ. A fair hearing? What we... Yeah, they came on and we listened to we, we look, Michael Steele came on, we listened to his his point of view. So did Carlos. He came on and listened to his point of view. And okay, we didn't right. we didn't call them out and tell them that they're bad people or, or, or call them coons. They're not. They're gentlemen who came on and have differences of opinion than ours, and that's that's fine. And how Stormy and, and, and Silky how did how did is what, what are names again? Diamond and Silk. It's, I mean, they sound like strippers. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't want to see that. Up to the, I'm not trying to, to see to that. Stage, uh, uh, no, 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 no. I don't. I will never have no diamond and silk glitter on me. That's not going okay. down. All right, uh, you. That, okay, I'm sorry. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm out of my weight class. I can't rock. I got that. you. I got you. But they cooned their entire way through the election. They, you know, have they fall into the stereotypical things that white America thinks of a lot of black women with the neck rolling and the, the eye popping and the finger snapping. And that's just, I tried to ignore them and we, we didn't discuss them for the, for that time frame. They, however, have reared their ugly coon head once more. They have here recently come out and said that Facebook is trying to marginalize them. Facebook's been through all kinds of challenges Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. They say that Facebook is trying to marginalize them because of they're censoring them and preventing them from making money. I'd say this, you coons. You know when I was younger, when coons would get on the porch, mama just sweep them off with a broom. But that was Forrest Gump reference. I guess maybe it was a little bit too white, huh? My bad, y'all. My bad. But these coon ass. <laughs> <laughs> Your mama, what would you say about your mama was coons, sweeping coons, coons get on the back porch, porch? mama just sweep off for the coons get on the back porch, mama just sweep them off for the broom. You don't remember Forrest Gump saying that? Never mind. I was about to say, we, we didn't have coons on Birdwood. Okay. Right. Like, all right. Hmm? All right, my dude. All right. Black squirrels. Black squirrels. Yeah. Black squirrels. Oh, yeah. oh. But that would have been, that, okay. we didn't have them where I lived either. That would be Greenbow, Alabama. But that's a whole other oh. thing, you know. Okay. Gotcha. Whole, okay. Right. So anyhow, okay. the deal was this. They were paid 1200 and some dollars to be a part of the Trump campaign when, and this is how stupid they are. They did everything they possibly could do to embarrass themselves to, and, and embarrass African Americans in general for 1200 and some dollars. When the rest of the people who were involved with the campaign had their hands out, were getting tens of thousands of dollars. You idiots. If you want to be a coon and you want to sell out, sell out and get some money. You should at least been able to say, yo, we can make a living off of this and picked up 50 or 60 stacks. But you coons took $1,200. Now, I don't make it a purpose. I don't make it a point of calling people coons. That's not what I do. I don't think anyone can go back and find me calling several people coons. But that's what they are. I'm unapologetic in this scenario. And when someone comes at for me and says that I shouldn't say this, I'm not backing down. But at the same time, I am offering those two coon assholes. Oh. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa. Nah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that, was, Whoa. that was too far. That was too Whoa. damn far. 
that was, was too, too far, far, Maynard. That I'm offering those two coon asses some cactus. In fact, have the finest cactus and choke on it. That's um. the cactus. All right, we out, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much for, you know, being a part of this episode of Three Black Guys with the Mic. We will get with you again tomorrow. Oh, man, I'm sorry, not tomorrow. What? Next Tuesday. We'll be back again next Tuesday. He trying to work us hard, ain't he, Lamont? He trying, oh, you trying to work the, the dog shit out of us, ain't he? Yes, 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 yes. We'll be back again next Tuesday for another episode. Go to the Facebook page. Get in on the conversation. Facebook.com slash Three Black Guys with the Mic. All right? Holla.